Good evening, everyone. I would like to call the Ferndale City Council meeting for Monday, May 23rd, 2011, to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Council Members Baker? Here. Galloway? Here. Lennon? Here. Piana? Mayor Coulter? Here, yes. Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, our first order of business would be the approval of the agenda. Any changes to the agenda this evening? I don't know that it's a change, but the agenda that we got on Friday did not include a D on the regular agenda, but my understanding is that the latest agenda does include Yes, and it says revised. It does okay. that for I didn't get a copy of that agenda, but that's all right. Uh, that's the drug paraphernalia moratorium? Yes. And that'll be item D? Did you have something? No. Okay. All right. As long as I know which agenda we're voting on. I would move to accept the agenda in its entirety. Support. That was uh, moved by Baker, supported by Lennon. Any other discussion? Yeah. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Baker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The agenda passes. Uh, we have two presentations this evening, uh, the first being from our Downtown Development Authority. Is there a representative of the DDA here? Yes. One of our board members. Uh, my name is Jackie Smith, and I'm one of the board members of the DDA. And I'm here to give you the lowdown of what's happening in the DDA area, in the downtown area, which we all love so much. Um, our theme this month is we're proud to be in Ferndale. We're proud of every aspect of it. And we have three big things that have happened um, throughout May and then going into June. We, this is the 93rd annual Memorial Day Parade. Uh, I think that's amazing that this is the oldest continuous parade in Michigan, and um, it's quick. Come on down to Ferndale. You get to the parade. You, there's going to be um, lots of uh, people represented, including a marching band, which is close to my heart because my daughter's in the color guard. I'll be cheering her on. Um, and, and you're going to hear about Ferndale Pride right after me, and I won't even go into that because there's so much amazing things happening with that that have been pulled together. <clears throat> that can, um, Mr. Covey will be speaking to you later. Um, but this is more than an event. So the only thing I want to say about this is this is more than an event. This is Ferndale's community and Ferndale's pride coming out. The other thing I want to talk about that we're proud of in Ferndale is over a thousand pieces of Ferndale artwork was in downtown Ferndale this past week. And if you missed it, which unfortunately if you did, but if you missed it, you have a second chance at the Loving Touch Gallery. They have a gallery night on June 4th where um, some of the um, pieces, selected pieces, will be auctioned off. Um, the other thing we're proud to be in Ferndale about is we're continuing our third Thursdays. And in June uh, 16th, there's the Pimp Your Pot. And there's nothing funkier in Ferndale when we all come out and, and take our trash cans and toilets and turn them into some great floral arrangements. <laughs> but it is something that's Ferndale. We're, we're all about having fun with whatever we do. So volunteers are needed. Um, to come and plant flowers with the kids and, and many other things. Um, stores are, are invited to do new flower, flower arrangements in front of their store, and uh, there's lots of good things going on, and there's more to come on that. So keep your eye on um, downtownferndale.com for more information. Um, another reason why we're proud to be in Ferndale is two things that happened with the county over this past month. Number one is we got another perfect score. Um, the uh, Main Street, Oakland County, which um, L. Brooks Patterson, our county executive, turned out Wednesday, May 11th, to honor downtown officials from Ferndale and many other cities. And Ferndale got another perfect score on our Main Street, which keeps us in the program, which keeps us growing and keeps us vibrant, which keeps us creating our own economic revolution right here in Ferndale. Um, the other thing that we're really proud to, to um, share and share with Ferndale Pride is is um, the proclamation calling for diversity in all things and officially recognizing Ferndale Pride. And again, 
Commissioner Covey will speak more to that, and, and we're very proud of that. Um, we're just going to continue on our proud to be in Ferndale, and we have a lot of anniversaries coming up. We have Como's, which we are, all know about, which is 50 years. Did you know Danny's is 25 years in Ferndale? Emory, the Emory has been five years in Ferndale. Pinreel Bakery is celebrating four. And we have a lot of um, stores that are celebrating their first year in Ferndale, which is the downtown Ferndale Bike Shop, Designer Retail Boutique, Diablo's, Liberty Tax, Green Thumb. And if we have missed anybody, please let us know. Um, we want to honor your accomplishments, your anniversaries, or any milestones. So we want to celebrate this with all of Ferndale as well as the City Council. Um, we have a huge welcome to the neighborhood for Valentine Vodka and TJ's Sweet Repeats. They just had ribbon cuttings last week. Uh, I'm very excited personally about Valentine Vodka. I'm a manufacturer in Ferndale, and I'm excited to see more and more manufacturers outside of the auto industry come into Ferndale. And, um, and who doesn't love a new martini bar? But uh, <laughs> uh, Valentine Vodka is a really neat place, and, and we're really excited to have them here. And TJ Sweet Repeats, this is a relocation from a, a Royal Oak business into Ferndale, and, and we're really excited to have her here. It continues to, to create the atmosphere in Ferndale that's vintage, that's renew, reuse, and that's very green. Um, we want to know what, what your downtown event is. So whoever's watching this presentation or, or has any connection to downtown, we want to celebrate it here. We want to give you a, a voice here in that. So I just wanted to open that up for the future. And the last thing is a quick did you know. The interesting things about uh, downtown Ferndale that you might not know, but the DDA has a wealth of material for opening up and growing your own business. Um, we, there's information from um, the Small Business Administration. There's information on how to create a business plan. There's information on microloans. Um, there's just a wealth and way too many things to list. When I started making the list, they wouldn't fit on the slide. So come on into the DDA because it's all for free. And the last thing I think we have is, of course, volunteer opportunities. The DDA runs on volunteers. Uh, we only have a couple of uh, paid uh, staff members and the rest of us, including me, are volunteers. We put in a lot of time and it's a lot of fun. And I'm not lying. It is a lot of fun. We laugh a lot. And we have a couple of volunteer uh, opportunities coming up with Ferndale Pride, Pimp Your Pot, uh, the Live Green Fair, and the Fido Does Ferndale. And that's only the beginning of the list. We have ongoing volunteer opportunities from stuffing envelopes to helping us create and promote events. So to be part of the fun, you can contact the DDA. Um, at uh, info at downtownferndale.com or you can call us at 248-546-1632. Downtownferndale.com is a great place to go to see what's happening and what's coming up. So I thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and the, any questions for, from council? <clears throat> all right. I did my job. Jackie, thank you so much for all the work you do, being on the board member of the DDA, being on the finance committee last year, all of that being recognized as the citizen of the year at the Elks Club uh, just a few weeks ago. Very Thanks honored. For all thank your you. service to Ferndale. Thank you very much. That was, that was a surprising and welcome honor. Thank you. Well deserved. Thanks. Our next presentation is regarding Ferndale Pride, and I believe that's going to be uh, uh, oh, we're a, a tag team here of our... County Commissioner Craig Covey. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, good evening. Mr. City good evening. Manager and staff and council members. I knew today would go well. Um, we had three rainbows over, ra over Ferndale <laughs> today. Each time it rained and the sun came out. Um, on your agenda tonight, item three, I think on the consent, is the adoption of a diversity resolution. I just want to mention that if you pass that tonight, It'll be the 12th time, 12 years in a row, that this city has stood up for diversity. I bring that up because as my other hat in Oakland County as a commissioner, I put together a very similar resolution for the county. Um, as you know, it's, it's in control by some more conservative elements, and they, they weren't going to go for a resolution. So I then went for a proclamation, which I did get. Um, 10 of the 25 county commissioners signed the proclamation. I'm very proud of that, including one Republican. I would have liked to have had more Republicans, but I think over time they're going to someday understand the importance of diversity. 
Nine of the ten Democrats signed it. So I just thought I'd show you this. We're going to present it at the uh, rally, and then perhaps there might even be a place here at City Hall for this proclamation. It's pretty neat. Don't you think? Mayor, how are you? Mayor Hazel Park is here. A little bit of county business. The uh, Oakland County Road Commission will be here tomorrow meeting with Mr. Uh, the City Manager, Wallen Weber, and hopefully some other individuals. It is an open meeting. I hope folks will decide to come here at City Hall 1130. <coughs> Among other things, they'll talk about their plans for roads. <coughs> but as we know, they're not real warm to the idea of bicycles and bicycle lanes. And we ought to bring that up. I'm planning to come to the meeting if, if you will so allow me, sir. Um, also, politically, we have a fundraiser. The Democrats of the Oakland County Commission have a fundraiser this Thursday night at Villanova. I know Mr. Mr. Mayor is going to come by. Uh, please try to come by any time Thursday evening between 5.30 and 8 at Villanova. But uh, one of my co-chairs, Julia Music, is here with me to share. Um, as you know, about uh, three months ago, we learned that the big annual Motor City Pride was moving down to uh, Hart Plaza in Detroit. And we got together about 30 individuals, all volunteers. We have four co-chairs making up this committee. And in 90 days, we've managed to pull off what we think is going to be some pretty neat, fun, and entertaining events all across downtown Ferndale for three days from February, uh, sorry, from June 3rd to June 5th. Um, do you want to start by t sharing some of the good news about our sponsors? Yes. So we were very fortunate to receive a lead sponsor. Motor City Casino Hotel came on as our as the main sponsor for Ferndale Pride. We also have Dino's, Soho, Rosie O'Grady's, Danny's Irish Pub, and Bud Light as some of our lead sponsors. Um, towards the end of this brief talk, we'll list the uh, ways to reach us and how to find information on the website, the uh, Google pages, and Facebook, and all the other social marketing <laughs> techniques. But we do want to share what we have planned. On Friday, June the 3rd, the very first thing that will happen is what we're calling the We Are Family Parade. And it means just what it says. Everyone is welcome. It's a gay pride parade, but everyone in Ferndale, gay, straight, allies, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, because we're all part of the family. We'll be meeting beginning at 6 p.m. in the uh, alley behind Affirmations there at the Withington parking lot. Vehicles are allowed to be in the parade if they register with us. Um, we expect marching bands and lots of different people, and um, everyone is welcome, family-oriented, children, adults. At 7 p.m., that parade will step off with police escort. We'll march through the downtown to City Hall for a rally, and I do need to talk to the city about electricity. I have to figure out where we plug in our speakers. We do have our permits and all that. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk for the great work you did. Um, after the rally disperses um, and all of the restaurants and clubs and, and uh, businesses in Fernandez will be open, we have matched the businesses with nonprofit organizations. So you'll be able to network and find a lot of the community groups throughout the city uh, in the various businesses. A lot of the restaurants and bars and clubs will be having parties. Then at 9 p.m. we have the first annual night march in Ferndale. It's called Illuminating Our Diversity. And I think it's going to be pretty unique and pretty neat and probably become an annual event. But it's uh, meeting at 9 p.m. here at City Hall. Again, everyone is welcome. And we're asking people to bring lights, glow sticks, anything that lights up uh, that is safe, of course, no torches. Um, but we're, we're going to have this night march on the sidewalks throughout the downtown. We expect up to 500 people and people can, can light themselves up in any way that they choose and can. We'll be selling linky lights and all sorts of things that glow in the dark. So that is Friday evening, beginning about 9.30. The night march will wind its way all through downtown. Then we have club parties and, and things going on across downtown. Then on June 4th, we're happy to welcome back the Dyke March for their second annual Dyke March. They'll step off at 2 o'clock, and they're meeting at the alley behind Rust Belt. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so they step off at 2 o'clock. The rally starts at 3 o'clock at Gary Park. It goes from 3 to 7. And then they have a rockin' after party at Rosie's, which will start at 9 o'clock. There's a host of other events that we don't even have time to list. Um, but, and Sherilyn, you'll be happy to hear this. The uh, 
I think it's the fifth annual Motor City Bears oh. car wash is on Saturday. <laughs> That's at the, uh, <laughs> the old Paramount Bank, now Level One Bank. This is big that. men, <laughs> big men in bikinis washing cars. Um, there's, I think there's a dinner Friday night. Also, the library is doing a big pride event Friday evening. I think it blooms. And, and I'm, I still don't know the details if the gay wedding or the gay union ceremony is happening, but we suspect that that is happening as well. So there's really a lot going on, things that we don't even know about, but we're still putting them up on our website. We do need volunteers. Monica Mills, who's the volunteer coordinator for everything we do, is doing a great job. Um, everything we're doing is free, by the way. We will be selling uh, little blinky lights and things and taking donations. Um, but if you'd like to volunteer, there's, you can find us through the website, through the various Facebook things. And we are inviting all the businesses and stores downtown to demonstrate their support of diversity and pride by displaying rainbow flags. The rainbow flag, of course, is a symbol representing all the colors of the rainbow, representing all the types of people that there are. And again, not costing the city anything, but a way from organically uh, grassroots to demonstrate our unity. And I want to make sure that I mention the Facebook and the website. So if you would like to join us, find us on, on Facebook at Ferndale Pride. Friend us today, and then you'll get your invitation as soon as you friend us. And then our website is <coughs> FerndalePride.com. That's pretty much it. We have, again, parties, uh, Como's, uh, Loving Touch, Danny's, a lot of the clubs will be having parties and things on Saturday night and Sunday night also. But the whole weekend has got things going on. We will have shuttles that run from Ferndale to Motor City Pride down in Hart Plaza. There may be up to three different sets of shuttles going from Como's, Rosie's. So if you'd like to uh, not have to worry about driving, we uh, will have all that information. So. Mr. Mayor and Council, that's what we put together yeah. in our spare time. Um, I think it's going to be fun. And this stuff happens rain or shine since it's been raining every day forever. Any questions from our uh, council members or staff? Hope to see well, you. Well, first of all, just thank you. I know that in a very short amount of time since hearing the news that they were going to move Motor City Pride to Detroit, you have put together an amazing uh, array of events in a very short amount of time. So thank you on the behalf of the city. I plan on being there much of that time. As you know, I, I've also offered, <coughs> offered to do the commitment ceremonies again if they so choose. I would, I understand, would be the fourth mayor uh, in a row now to do those. I certainly hope that we're able to to accomplish that. But for all the great things that you've helped plan, uh, thank you very much. Sounds like a very speaking, exciting weekend. You'll be speaking at least one of the rallies. The other council members, please consider coming if you'd like to speak. I'm inviting the, the, the county commissioners as well. So thank you. Thank uh, you. Appreciate everything. The city's been very, very helpful. Police Department, Cheryl Lynn's office, Michael Larry, all the council members. So thank you kindly. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Thank you both. Oh, and here's the poster, by the way. You can. Uh, you can see downtown Ferndale with the uh, rainbow. This, of course, is a Larry Mills photograph. Uh, <laughs> thank you kindly. Great job. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. All right. Our next order of business would be a public hearing. Mr. City Manager, do you want to introduce that item? Or Certainly. Um, this is really a public hearing for a request for a new outdoor service in conjunction with their existing Class C license for Grasshopper Pub. I think uh, the clerk passed out some additional information, the layout, et cetera, um, and that's probably all I have to say. All right. Are there questions of clarification before I open the public hearing? Questions from the council? All right. Then I hereby open the public hearing. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address us on this matter? Sir, I'm guessing that's you. That's me. Hi, I'm Troy. I'm the owner of Grasshopper Pub. Um, just a quick overview of what we're doing. Being a basement restaurant, basement bar in Ferndale, um, summertime comes along, everyone has a patio, and until midnight I see not one face. Therefore, um, now that we're offering a full service restaurant, we were changing our hours to earlier in the day, offering simple sandwiches, drink specials, etc. But that's why the, the patio piece is such a big thing for us at Sidewalk Cafe. I've attached on here, we went through MDOT, got an MDOT permit, we also came to the city and did everything we needed for the city sidewalk license. Um, our insurance forms, property, and liability insurance, and uh, sign off from the landlord. So, 
that's it. So I hope I'll see some of you guys. Thank you so much. Hang on, just in case there's any questions or comments. Any questions, comments from, from council? No, this was all attached in our package. All your yep. in order. Looked like everything was in order. Excellent. Excellent. Sounds Thank like a great you. idea as well. I hope it's, I hope it helps. Thank you. All right. Any uh, anyone else from the public who would like to address this topic? If not, I will close the public hearing. Uh, and at this point, from council, a motion would be in order. I would move to recommend the Michigan Liquor Control Commission approval of the request from Grasshopper Pub for a new outdoor service area to be held in conjunction with a 2011 Class C licensed business with dance entertainment permit located at 22757 Woodward Avenue, Suite 300, Ferndale, Michigan, 42 Oakland County. Second. Moved by Baker, supported by Lennon. Any further discussion? I think it's nice this will be the, the you know, the former uh, Gracie's Underground, and there really haven't been um, sidewalk cafes in that little corner of Lennon Woodward, so this will be a nice addition. Yeah, yeah very excited. Anything else? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Scalloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Baker? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. That item passes. Congratulations. Before I get to the call to audience, uh, I wanted to inform the council that Councilwoman Piana had previously scheduled that she wouldn't be here tonight. She had a work engagement that she couldn't get out of, and so if the council was so inclined to make a motion to excuse her absence, that would be appropriate. So moved. Second. Moved by Galloway, supported by Lennon. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Certainly. Council members Lennon? Yes. Baker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. Uh, that passes. Uh, next item of business is call to audience. As I think everyone knows, call to audience is up to 30 minutes now and more time if needed at the end of the agenda. For any item that is not on the agenda, please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, as you will also have an opportunity when we get to that portion of the agenda to talk on that issue. Please state your name and address or write it on the sign-in sheet for the purposes of our city clerk. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hey, everybody. My name is Trevor Johnson, 1687 West Hazelhurst. <coughs> um, I'm here representing the Ferndale Farmers Market this evening. We are starting mid-June at the Kulik Center, official date to be determined, um, but we're accepting applications now. Um, and you can find us at farmferndale.com um, or just Google Ferndale Farmers Market. Um, in Michigan, there's a Ferndale, Washington, and I received a lot of requests for really awesome products um, that are um, 3,000 miles away. Um, and so we're looking for applications. Anyone who wants to join us in any programming, um, um, we're looking for people who want to um, play music or do talks about gardening or local things, maybe cooking demonstrations, things we're going to be having in our little 10 by 10 tent there um, for our main events. And uh, also for the Royal Oak Community Farm over on 11 in Campbell, I am covered in dirt because I was planting uh, Brussels sprouts today with uh, sixth graders from uh, Adams Elementary and um, had got them to Google Brussels sprouts when they got home and see how they grow. Um, and then to, you can check them out there right on the R11 mile road there. Um, and we still have a couple shares available, Royal Oak Community Farm. <coughs> you can check us out there. And I look forward to seeing you all at market. And you'll see all of our information come out. And it's going to be our PR blast here in the next week and, and change. So unless there's any questions from council, thank you very much. Trevor, thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Martin, 1447 West Hazelhurst. And I am here on behalf of the Ferndale Community Foundation. And I just want to remind folks that we are accepting grant applications this year through Friday, June 10th. Um, all the information can be found online at www.ferndalecommunityfoundation.org uh, or through the city manager's office. Or you can give me a call directly at 248-672-4067. Uh, we plan on giving out $7,000 this year to area nonprofits that have projects either in the city or that will make a significant impact to the quality of life for the residents of Ferndale. So, again, www.ferndalecommunityfoundation.org, and the deadline is Friday, June 10th. You can submit it electronically or through the city manager's office. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Voyles. I live at 1687 Wordsworth. 
my lovely wife Lorraine and I have lived in Ferndale for six good years. We love this city and the great neighbors we have here. Just yesterday, Sunday of all days, while I was at Bible study, we had a potential fire emergency. Lorraine saw and smelled smoke in our kitchen. She did the right thing. She called 911, also called our neighbors, Randy and Amanda Hahn, for help. Within minutes, the fire department responded, and Randy came over to lend a hand. He called me home from church and called my wife down. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that very much. We never did find the source of the smoke. No fire broke out. But the message was clear. We had help when we needed it the most, by Ferndale's finest. Our fire department did an outstanding job. Before they left, they scanned all electrical outlets, breaker panels, all appliances, used a heat sensor to find hot spots behind the walls, and gave us advice on how to prevent future problems. They even gave us a follow-up call to see if we were all right, if you can believe that. These guys were great. We would like to thank the fine men and women of our police and fire departments for your service. A job well done. Don't even think about cutting these services any further. Indeed, God does work in mysterious ways. This was a wake-up call for us. It could happen to anyone. Fire prevention and public safety is a serious business. It's our family's well-being. Be prepared. Check the little things. Overloaded outlets, appliances, clean the refrigerator coils, <coughs> incense burners, candles, ashtrays if you smoke. Maintain smoke detectors. Have an escape plan. We are our brother's keeper. Be vigilant. Keep your eyes and ears open. Get involved. Help your neighbors. Be alert. Stay alive. Thanks again, Ferndale, for a great job. May God and his son Jesus continue to bless us all and keep us safe. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're glad that it worked out well for you, and I think we all agree with you about our fine fire department. So Excellent. glad you could be here. Thorough, good. Excellent job. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Good evening. Council. City Manager, Attorney, <coughs> uh, my name is Dan Hartzell. I live at 548 West Lewiston, and I'm here on behalf of the Ferndale Historical Society and Museum. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody when we go down to the War Memorial this Monday to honor those who have served, uh, to just go across the street and visit us if you'd like. We'll be open from 10 to 1 o'clock. Uh, we're right next door to station number one, the fire station there, speaking great job. And um, please come and visit. Our doors are open, and uh, we'd like to see you. And we're open besides uh, Memorial Day. We're open most Mondays from 10 to 1, Wednesdays 10 to 1, and Saturday 1 to 4. Hope to see you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Dan. Anyone else like to address council today and call the audience? I was hoping you would do that. Mayor Jack Lloyd of the great city of Hazel Park. Jack Lloyd, Mayor of the city of Hazel Park. <laughs> I'd like to um, say hi, first of all. And um, Mr. Wallenweber, council, mayor, city clerk, Cheryl, how are you? First of all, I'd like to thank the council, the city manager, and the staff for uh, the support of my recent passing of my wife. Uh, support and uh, letters and condolences. Thank you very much. Second of all, I'd like to uh, say that uh, I understand only the best of the best get in here. The review. <laughs> Sorry about all that. This is, a, this is an excellent <laughs> magazine and shows the finest of the best. Downtown Ferndale and uh, the staff. Thanks. Right Thank there. you, Mayor. Only the best of the best get in there. That's what I'm told. I, since I've never made it in there, <laughs> <laughs> Clearly I want to say congratulations, obviously. <laughs> um, but you absolutely deserve it because Ferndale is a great downtown, and um, you got a lot to be proud of. you got a great council, great city manager, great staff. 
Wraith Police and Fire, as they mentioned. I'm glad they brought that up tonight. Um, second of all, I want to wish everybody a happy, safe Memorial Day holiday weekend this weekend. And to let everybody know, it's, I know you're considering noise levels. Well, this time you can be proud that it won't be over there backing up to Ferndale or Green Acres Park. It's underwater, the whole Green Acres, so we moved it all over to the ice arena. Uh -huh. The whole weekend okay. festivities will be at the ice arena, and that includes the Lions Beer Tent, the bands, all of them, everything is over there because um, Green Acres is just flooded with all the water, and they, they had to put the trailer somewhere. They didn't want it to sink. The rides, everything is over there. Second of all, you have a great downtown. I want to thank everyone. Congratulations on the millage. I think it was well, um, it, you did really good on it, and it showed you did your homework and let the people know what it was. And first of all, you were honest and up front on everything. So thank you very much. I just want to say congratulations again for the honor of review. That's a great, that is absolutely great. Good picture. Well, b before you leave, first of all, you got a much bigger millage passed by a much larger margin. So congratulations to the, to the education that you were able to do in Hazel Park and the, and the case that you were able to make for the public well, service. I think it, it speaks highly of both of us. I mean, we, we, it's all about honesty and accountability and, uh, you know, bringing the information out. And so uh, you, you did that. You had town hall meetings and uh, you, you had it right here all the time. And you came right out front what it was going to be used for and what the money is going to be and what you're doing with it and how it was while it was needed. So uh, we all have a lot to be thankful for. So hopefully the weekend will be great this weekend. I understand there's only a 20% chance of rain going towards the weekend. So uh, that's great. I just wanted to uh, say that tonight and I really appreciate well, it. And I had wondered why you moved to the... I got this book oh. at City Hall. Oh, gosh. My name's on the back. Like <laughs> And uh, <laughs> everyone gets one. I know all the municipalities, but not just Hazel Park and Ferndale. It goes to all the Oakland County municipalities and throughout the Michigan Municipal League. So this is a great honor and Thank you, well deserved. So you ought to give yourself a pat on the back for this. Thank you, Jack. But let me let me put in a second plug for. I wondered why you were moving the Memorial Day Carnival, but in Hazel Park, a lot of our residents go to it. It's a very large, very fun carnival that you do after your parade uh, that you normally do at the community center, but because or at the park. I'm sorry. Not years. It was been at the uh, Hazel Park Recreation Center. It backs up the side backs, of Ferndale. Yeah. Over that way, and, uh, and a lot of our residents go. It's a very popular event, but it right. will be at the ice arena. The ice arena. Right down where we're so everyone all knows. Down. So we'll be coming down John R. from Eight Mile all the way down John R. We'll go right to the left towards the recreation center. All the festivities from Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, all the way through Monday. It's going to be on. And uh, it's a good, it's a good time. We'll match some of your Ferndale uh, pride, though. But uh, you've got a lot of festivities and a lot of things going on here. And finally, Jack, let me just say, I know many of us have said this to you privately. We actually talked about it up here publicly, but we all, of course, express our condolences and our grief at the loss of your wife. Very sorry for you. And you know you have friends here in Ferndale, and we love when you come, and we loved your wife and appreciate it. Very sorry. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Mayor. Thank you. All right, that concludes call to audience. Next order of business would be the consent agenda. Uh, all the items on the consent agenda are considered routine by us, uh, and we enact them all in one motion unless something is pulled. Uh, consent agenda A, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held May 9, 2011, and the special meetings held April 20th, April 27th, and May 4th, 2011. B, approval to authorize the, the assistant city manager to sign the help net contract and approve the payment of $4,564 charged to fringe benefits contractual services for the year April 1st, 2011 through April 1st, 2012. C, approval to adopt the fee schedule for fiscal year ending 2012. D, approval of the reassessments to the July 1st tax bills. E, approval to adopt a resolution declaring June 2011 as Gay Pride Month. F, approval to authorize the police department to create an eligibility list for the position of police lieutenant. G, approval to begin the hiring process to fill the police dispatcher vacancy. 
H, approval of the partnership with Oakland County to demolish the dangerous bu building located at 857 Camden and to reimburse the county in the amount of $9,830. I, approval to reappoint DPW Director Byron Fatides as representative and interim city manager Mark Wallenweber as alternate to represent the city of Ferndale on the board of trustees of the Southeastern Oakland County Resource Recovery Authority for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2011. J, approval to purchase Master Station System 900 with wireless headsets and base, including all attachments, jacks, and wiring for $4,637 from Synergy Wireless of Troy. And K, approval of the bills and payroll as certified by the city manager, subject to the review of the Council Finance Committee. There are uh, two items that I would like to pull. I would like to pull um, item C as in cat and item E as well. That's generally something that we um, uh, read aloud those resolutions. That's all. Excellent. Uh, and C, are we pulling that for the purpose of discussion or for tabling it to the next meeting? I would prefer to table it to the next meeting as I have some questions for the, uh, the uh, community development manager, director. Sorry. So, uh, but we can get to that discussion when it comes back up on the... Okay. Agenda. So C and E, any other items to be removed from the consent agenda? A motion would be in order. C and E. E like Eeyore, elephant? I don't know. He is Eeyore. I just have a quick question about item D. D? D. Uh -huh. Approval of reassessments to the July 1st tax bills. Yes. Is that in relationship to the millage, or is that something else? No, no. It's, it's in relation it's to anybody who's delinquent on their water tax bill by a certain date. That amount gets added to their tax bill. Oh, okay. Thank you. I don't have to worry. <laughs> Anything else on the consent agenda? I would move to adopt the consent agenda with the exception of items C and E. I support. Moved by Baker, supported by Galloway. Any further discussion? All right, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Council Members Baker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. The consent agenda uh, passes. Now to our regular agenda. Item A is the consideration of the acceptance of the SAFER grant. Uh, let the city manager uh, introduce this item. Certainly. Um, a couple things. Um, this um, was on hold. Uh, the chief has done an excellent job of researching this with um, Homeland Security, and it's our recommendation, both his and mine, to proceed with the acceptance of the SAFER grant, which is worth nearly $900,000 to us, and will provide, uh, allow us to bring back uh, the four firefighters that were laid off, and the only condition is that we cover them for two years. As the chief points out, in, uh, that they, they will not be laid off within that two-year period. There's a minimum that we must maintain that, that status for that period of time subject to uh, folks leaving, uh, you know, either voluntarily or retiring, and that's not included in that. I would say that um, while we still do not have a contractual agreement with the firefighters and certainly the issue of Pleasant Ridge, uh, whether they're going to provide our two-year notice, uh, prior to June 30th, but even with those issues unknown at this point, it's still our recommendation to proceed. I probably said everything that the chief was going to say, but if there's anything else he'd like to add, we strongly recommend this. We think it's uh, in keeping with the millage pa being passed uh, that we're able to do this. Chief, you want to come on up? Can I have a, a question through the chair, um, either sure. for the city manager or for Chief Sullivan? Um, the dates that are, I'm looking at the recommended actions tonight, and the dates that are listed are April 7th, 2011 to April 6th, 2013. And I know that um, those dates may change on the, on the back end. Yes. Um, as we've talked with FEMA, and uh, they seem very receptive to giving us an extension. There's some two months on state, the end. Should I state those dates? Um, you can say subject to uh, further discussion with FEMA for, additional, uh, for the additional two months, I think would be fine. If the two-month extension would give us the full 851 164. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't say April 6, 2013 in the motion if that wasn't correct, because yeah. hopefully we're getting it until 
hopefully we get Basically them June get them back in in uh, and up and running by June seventh. That would be full, two full months, and so it would extend into June of uh, 2013. Okay, I'll just say the full two years. Then. Okay. Chief, when do you think we can have these four uh, firefighters? I contacted back. all of them. They're all available and uh, waiting on tonight's vote of council to. Uh, give notice to their uh, employers that they're working with currently and uh, we just got to get them down. I already have it scheduled for Henry Ford. They're receptive to, uh, I've been working on uh, changing up our physicals with them to get more bang for our buck and, and fit the federal uh, grant money program. Have, Kevin, are they, Chief, have they uh, lost any certification on any particular license uh, they might we'll hold? We'll go over that, Councilman, but I don't believe, I believe all of them have been using their paramedic license and yeah. working for hospitals or other ambulance okay. companies to stay afloat during the layoff. Beautiful. So I don't think they've lost anything, but we'll run them through the grill and make sure all those things are checked and up to par and do a background check on license yeah. and that kind of thing. Real good. I would move that we approve the SAFER grant for the performance period of April 7, 2011 uh, through April 6, 2013 and as amended by any um, extensions and authorize the terms of the FEMA contract as outlined in the attached document. Uh, subject to the terms of the FEMA agreement, authorize the rehiring process as set up by staff to bring back the laid-off firefighters as submitted by Fire Chief uh, and supported by the City Manager. Support. Moved by... Galloway and supported by Baker. Any other discussion or questions? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think the process worked about how we envisioned it, Chief. Uh, you know, taking these things one step at a time, and uh, we're very happy up here to be able to uh, prove this safer Absolutely. brand. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it with fact and not fiction, and it worked out beautifully. I know people were frustrated that we weren't able to do this sooner, but there was a process, and uh, you know, step in and I said it before, either. nobody wanted to do this more than we <laughs> did, and we're excited to have the four guys back, Chief. So, Thank you. Uh, great. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Council Members Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Baker? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, yes. thank you. That item thank passes. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Item... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, regular agenda item B, consideration of a recommendation from our noise consultant. Um, we, as, as people probably know, we retained a, a consultant of, oh, sometime last year to study the issue of noise in our downtown and across the city, really. We now have a, a report from our noise consultant. At that time, last year, uh, a subcommittee was formed that included two members of council, including Councilman Galloway and Councilwoman Piana. They met last week to review the recommendations of the consultant. We don't have an ordinance, per se, to bring forward this evening, but I think it's still appropriate uh, that Councilman Galloway, who was at that meeting, uh, update the residents on, on, on the consultant's recommendations and where they stand and where we are in moving towards an ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've met a couple times now since uh, this was referred over to the special committee. And after hiring the uh, sound engineer, engineering firm of Colano and Saha, uh, we learned a lot about sound and how it works in downtown areas and uh, different ways to measure it and what might be appropriate uh, for a community of our type with the, uh, the businesses of budding and uh, the businesses really creating amplified music noise as opposed to perhaps um, machinery or, uh, or equipment running. And, uh, as you said in the introduction, we don't have any finalized proposal to the council, but uh, based upon the way that we're measuring sound, which is an average over one minute rather than uh, a point source, uh, it's uh, the recommendation of the uh, sound engineer to actually lower our, uh, our sound levels by a bit. Uh, we're going to talk about that a bit more and, and finalize that. And there's also a uh, idea of requiring uh, businesses that want to broadcast music or, or sound uh, outside of their building to have a, uh, a licensure that has to be reviewed like a site plan and has different levels and different levels of scrutiny and we're hopeful that uh, with lower levels and greater scrutiny of how the equipment is installed and operated that uh, will address the situation uh, you know, or the concerns raised by a lot of citizens. So 
We're almost there. We don't have a set time yet to uh, bring back a proposal, but I suspect it's uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, by sooner, I would say probably measured in uh, weeks rather than months or years. So uh, hopefully we'll have something soon. Thank you, Scott. Any questions of Scott from the council or the audience at this point would be appropriate. Thanks for your work on this. So basically no action tonight. We're just going to table it. Right. There's some uh, tweaks that have to, we have to actually get the ordinance language in shape and uh, get a few technical recommendations uh, pulled together. But uh, we've made a lot of progress and I think everybody, uh, the police chief, the city manager, uh, certainly uh, Melanie and myself have learned a lot about sound and, um, you know, why the uh, situation may be as it is on, on Troy there and such. So it's not going to be a perfect solution. It's not going to be uh, crickets chirping in the middle of the night, but uh, I think it's going to be uh, a much better uh, approach to addressing the, the sound. Thanks. Yeah, I don't believe action is required tonight, except no, I, I want to thank you and Councilwoman Priana for all your work in becoming much more uh, knowledgeable about yeah, sound issues now. than you ever thought you would be uh, running for council. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, next item of business, <coughs> excuse me, is a consideration of a condolence resolution for the family of WFRN TV volunteer John Font, and I would like to introduce um, one of our city employees, Marnie McGrath, who would like to read that uh, resolution and offer a few words. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, John was a longtime cable volunteer and he passed away unexpectedly May 11th and I appreciate this time to make a little statement and read his resolution. John Alfred Font, 68, a lifelong resident of Ferndale, died unexpectedly May 11th, 2011. He was born October 27th, 1942 to Alfred and Edith Segerstrom Font at Ferndale's Ardmore Hospital. And John was a 1960 graduate of Royal Oaks Dundero High School and attended Wayne State University before entering the U.S. Army. He married Charlene Ruth Mann on January 21, 1967. Upon completing his enlistment, John continued his education and graduated from Wayne State with a bachelor's degree in chemistry in 1970. And John worked at Inmont Corporation in Detroit before becoming a technical standard engineer for Ford Motor Company. He retired in 2001 after 30 years with the company. And John's kind and generous spirit was evident in the abundant time he spent volunteering. He was a longtime volunteer of WFRN-TV, the city's government ca access cable station. He began volunteering in the early 70s, or excuse me, early 90s, and continued until his death. He also served as Ferndale's representative to the Intergovernmental Cable Communications Authority from 2006 to 2008, and volunteered at Sakura as well. John was extremely active in the Royal Oak Methodist Church, volunteering in many capacities, including operating the audio system during services. And John and Charlene loved to travel, often with their entire family. They traveled extensively throughout the world, recently returning from such exotic destinations as Thailand, Switzerland, Sweden, and Finland. He also loved to hike and bicycle. He had an endless fascination with the world around him and was highly knowledgeable on a variety of subjects. He was also an avid stamp collector. John Alfred Font will be missed by many, but especially his loving wife Charlene, sons Michael John, Marie Name, and Charles Alfred, and daughter Adri Ariane Johanna Craig Delecki. Therefore, be it resolved that Ferndale's elected officials do hereby extend our community's condolences to the family of John Font. And there were so many wonderful things that John's wife Charlene told me about him that I would like to expound a bit more than we have room for in the um, resolution, if you'll indulge me for a moment. He was a lifelong member of the First United Methodist Church in Royal Oak, where he was confirmed at age 13, married to his wife Charlene in 1967, volunteered extensively, and was memorialized on Monday, May 16th. He served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War and was assigned to a meteorological unit of the Electronic Proving Grounds in Arizona. He spent the last 10 months of his enlistment in Thailand, and several years back, John and Charlene visited Thailand, and he loved showing her all of the places that he recalled from so many years earlier. After John was discharged from the military, he returned to Wayne State and resumed his education and became a technical standards engineer in paints and finishes. And after he retired, I understand that his coworkers called on him quite a bit to indulge in his expertise, and he was always quite willing to help. He was very 
active and kind and generous man who's always willing to help in any capacity he could. They have three wonderful children, Michael, Cal, and Arianne, and in recent years, they've expanded their family when Michael married Marie and Craig and Arianne were married in 2009. From what I understand, he loved his in-laws just as much as his own kids. And he was a hands-on hands -on dad, always very active in the schools when the children were growing up. And I just have to say that it's been my privilege to know John and Charlene and their entire family for many years. And that John did the last council meeting with me two weeks ago tonight. Mm -hmm. He came here and helped and he spent quite a bit of time after the meeting chatting with me because I hadn't seen him in a long time. And in retrospect, I think that was a wonderful thing. And just to wrap up, his wife Charlene um, called John a gentle, generous, and beautiful soul. And that's really very true. He was a wonderful man who gave of himself extensively and helped me personally and professionally. So I want to express my deep appreciation as member of the city staff for his lengthy service as a volunteer at WFRN and to personally extend my deepest sympathies to John's family for their heartbreaking loss. And thank you very much. Thank you. Marnie, thank you very much, and I know you researched that proclamation, and uh, we appreciate it, and I know his family will appreciate what a beautiful job you did. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would move for unanimous support. Support, support. All right, thank you very much. Regular agenda item D is consideration of a resolution to adopt a 120-day moratorium in the city's downtown district as set forth in section 19-69 of the Ferndale Code, suspending all acceptance and processing of requests for location of a retail establishment that intends to sell any item included in the definition of drug paraphernalia in MCL 333.7451. Uh, I would like the, yeah, the city manager, uh, if you would introduce this item, please. Certainly, thank you. Um, we the Community Development Department has, a, has had several calls and a number of requests about this, two fairly serious ones. I think both he and I being new um, and in discussion of this issue with the city attorney, it's our suggestion that council adopt a moratorium which would allow us some time to talk with Planning Commission uh, to determine how this affects some of the other existing ordinances. Um, and to really define this and perhaps uh, determine where best place in our zoning ordinance these kinds of establishments might be. Um, I don't think we're ready to do that, but I think this would be assigned by the council if this passes to both uh, staff and to work with the Planning Commission to who are experts in this area to study this. Uh, Derek is here. If you have any questions, Dan is here. Uh, drafted the actual resolution. We don't recommend these things lightly. We do think uh, we don't want to interfere with business opportunities in the community, but I really think uh, um, in this case this is warranted because of the extensive ordinances the city has already, how it would affect this, how it ties into some of the other uh, specifics in our ordinance, um, and so we do recommend this consideration. Through the chair, Dan, what would you recommend? Uh, recommend, recommend, um, period of time for moratorium on that. Well, the general rule is that any type of moratorium should be uh, for the shortest possible duration, which still affords the uh, respective body, in this case, the planning commission and the city council, to make an appropriate uh, study of the issue. Uh, it, I think the uh, recommendation of 120 days is is uh, within the, the, the category of reasonableness. Uh, it, it does not provide an uh, extensive time period. I mean, certainly the Planning Commission would have to get moving on it. Uh, and uh, uh, there's not specific Michigan case law uh, with respect to what is the appropriate or reasonable time period. But, but I have referenced uh, some federal cases and the period of 120 days does fit within uh, court cases that have interpreted under federal law. That's basically what I was looking for. Thank you. Any other questions about this item? A motion would be in order for discussion. I would 
move to adopt the resolution, and Dan, let me know if this is not specific enough. I would move to adopt the resolution regarding the 120-day moratorium as presented. Unless you want me to read the whole thing? Okay. Second. Moved by Baker, supported by Lennon. Okay, discussion, questions, comments? I know that this is something that the Planning Commission, and I, I talked with the, the Mayor about this, um, I know this is something the Planning Commission would want to weigh in on. Um, it was discussed sort of peripherally as we were looking at general um, zoning <coughs> ordinance issues regarding medical marijuana. Um, the, the conversation, though, wasn't specifically had about um, sales of paraphernalia items and where they might fall, and, and clearly there are some, some legal issues here, just as there are with medical marijuana, but um, I think the Ferndale Planning Commission has demonstrated that they are able to be um, as, as fair as possible when, when dealing with these things. I, I know they would definitely like to take this up. Thank you, Chief. Um, beyond the Planning Commission, is there any other department or people who will, we will be sort of formally asking to weigh in? Would it be the Police Department, the DBA, the others? What would yes. the process be, do you think, well, um, would be included? I think Derek and I will talk about the process right away and we'll bring it up at staff meeting tomorrow. Um, please certainly um, DDA, they, they all, all will be represented at staff meeting tomorrow. And um, Dan, in, in city attorney, in terms of requirements with the zoning ordinance and things like that. So uh, there might be some others. Uh, as well, because we won't preclude anybody from participating. We want to get a thorough discussion, uh, determine its impact on the other sections of our ordinances as well, and then bring back a specific recommendation to council. Beautiful. And if it took less than 120 days, oh, yeah. you could come, certainly come to us whenever you're ready to make a recommendation. Any other discussions, questions? Well, I was just going to follow up on that. And what this does is it allows for the status quo to be preserved while the issue is studied for a very short period of time mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it should not uh, unreasonably interfere with property owners and their respective rights to uh, develop the property as they see fit within the confines of the zoning district and the zoning ordinance. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Members Lennon? Yes. Baker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. That item passes. Uh, now the regular agenda includes consent agenda item C, which is the fee schedule. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you pulled this item? I did. I had um, some specific questions for the our uh, Community and Economic Development Director, and uh, I, I believe that uh, he might prefer to wait until our next meeting. To discuss this, I didn't realize um, that many of the changes to the fee schedule had been uh, proposed by his predecessor, although it seems that our new uh, economic development director is, is in favor of most of them. But um, just to, to be fair, to give him uh, some time to address my questions, he had really had the most lengthy and substantial changes to the fee schedule. I would just move, um, oh, and I should, I apologize, I should look the date up. Um, I, would just move that we postpone this conversation until our next regularly scheduled council meeting. I would uh, support that motion to table. Moved by Baker, supported by Galloway to table till the next agenda. I mean, until You're the ready, next Derek. council meeting. <laughs> Any further discussion? Um, just to give Derek a little bit of direction, um, as we were looking through the attachment, many of us look at this electronically, and you can see very clearly. Um, where things have changed from previous years, and there was a whole lot of red in the, um, the community development. <coughs> so just a lot of changes, some up and some down. And notably, there were some fees that were removed um, and some things that were new or increased. So things went up and down. So just for next time, if we can go through those a little bit and talk about how we compare to other cities um, and why you think that some of these changes are, are reasonable, that way we don't catch people off guard. Yeah, absolutely, we'd be glad to. And if there's anything specific anybody from council sees, that I'd like to forward to either directly to myself or through the city manager's office. We'd be glad to take a look at it and get any answers if you have specific questions. Okay. Thanks, Derek. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions or comments? 
Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Spaker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. That item is tabled until the next meeting. Uh, next regular agenda item is the former consent agenda E, Gay Pride Resolution. And I believe, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, you pulled this because you wanted me to read this, don't you? Uh, Please, I would yeah. like someone to read it. So, uh, yes. Um, and I am happy to do so because um, uh, June is has been as as... Commissioner Covey pointed out, I didn't realize, 12th year in a row now that Ferndale would declare June as Gay Pride Month in the city of Ferndale. We're honored to do that again for the 12th year. And that's just, I, I will take the time to read this because I want you to know why we take the time to, to honor this month. So at the regular meeting of the city council of the city of Ferndale on the 23rd day of May, the following resolution was moved and supported unanimously, hopefully. Uh, the city of Ferndale is rich in diversity, and this diversity is demonstrated in the great variations of people who live, work, shop, and socialize in our city. And we, the City Council of Ferndale, value this diversity and appreciate and celebrate the rich variation of persons in our city. We benefit from the multiple talents, viewpoints, and cultural backgrounds of all of our citizens. And the city is proud of our American heritage that accepts and welcomes diverse people. And we believe in a society that treats people on the basis of their intrinsic value as human beings without prejudice and unfair discrimination based on age, gender, race, color, religion, marital status, national origin, sexual orientation, or, phys or physical challenges. And we understand and appreciate the cultural, civic, and economic contributions of the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities in the greater community of Ferndale, particularly in the city's resurgence over the past 15 years. And we recognize June as the month celebrated worldwide each year with pride by GLBT communities, and that June 2011 is the 42nd anniversary of the beginning of the modern lesbian gay rights movement, which began in June 1969 in the great city of New York. And therefore, be it resolved that this city council recognizes and declares June 2011 as Gay Pride Month in the city of Ferndale, with our city celebrating during the weekend of June 3rd to June the 5th. And we pledge to continue our efforts at creating and maintaining a city that is free and open and that provides equal opportunity, fair treatment, and human dignity for all people. And that a copy of this resolution be sent to neighboring cities that border the great city of Ferndale. Mayor Lloyd, you're already here. And a copy to the executive of the county of Oakland and to the governor of the state of Michigan, our congressmen, and our senators. I would uh, accept a motion to that, to accept that proclamation, that resolution. Uh, so moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported? Oh, you were just going to tell me you didn't ask for weren't you? All right. Let's, let's call the roll on that. Who wants to be the maker of that motion? Oh, I'm Mayor sorry. Holton. Galloway and Lennon. Galloway supported by Lennon. Okay. Council Member Spaker? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Mayor Coulter? Yes. Thank you. That, that resolution passes open city. And um, I think, can I present this to you, Commissioner, to give to the, to the Pride organization? Can we give yes, you the, absolutely. we'd like to give you the official copy um, for all the great work that you've done on behalf of the Pride Weekend here, and we'll make sure the other copies get sent to the others. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. Much. Appreciate it. All right, our next order of business would be council liaison reports. Are there any liaison representatives uh, representing any of these organizations that, that would like to um, comment on, the, on uh, the progress of the last month tonight? All right, hearing none, the next order of business would be call to council. Um, police, I, um, excuse me, Fire Chief Sullivan, you've already been up once. Anything else you'd like to add? Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you again for uh, putting the SAFER grant through. Uh, I know there's four guys that are extremely excited about it. Um, I'll be heading out with uh, Fire Engineer Dennis Warlow tomorrow at about 1.30 to catch a flight down to Louisiana. We'll be doing the final inspection on our new aerial and handing a check over to them so that it'll be able to be driven back up here and become property of the 
city of Ferndale. So we're kind of excited. They got it all finished and everything should be ready to go. They're working on a few last installs. You just approved the communication system, so we're holding on that, but they can wire that quickly. So that's not an issue. After that, that's about all I have to say right now. Yeah, that's a good day's work. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Lieutenant Wilson, are you representing the police department this evening? Yes, sir. Come on up. Good evening, Council Mayor Hall. Good evening. Um, we have very little uh, to add tonight. However, we are going to try and uh, at least live up to uh, the standards of the fire department. And through the hard work of uh, Sergeant Jennings right now, we're working on a COPS grant in an effort to uh, get two police officers uh, hired for uh, this short term. This is a uh, four-year period where the grant would basically cover three years of the salary and the city would be required to cover the fourth. Uh, Sergeant Jennings is working hard and tediously on a 67-page uh, application. Um, happily, we've uh, had a relatively slower than expected crime rate around lately. However, uh, I believe Chief Collins mentioned it before, the larceny from autos have been uh, plaguing us as of recent. Uh, this weekend, Saturday night, we mornings of, uh, or Friday night, we mornings of Saturday, uh, our officers responded to the area of Albany and uh, Republic where we have been getting uh, hit with a lot of larceny from autos. Luckily, they were able to arrest uh, four individuals aged 17 to 21. All of them uh, had been drinking, all were drunk. They had stolen items with them, so hopefully this will uh, curtail a bit of our problem. But we still ask the citizens to lock your cars. This is still a crime of uh, both opportunity and ease. Uh, most all, 90 some percent of our cars or more that are getting hit are, are left unlocked. So if you lock your cars, you'll probably be pre able to prevent uh, losing electronic gear, cash, change, things of that nature. Now, last meeting, the chief talked about the, that happening around the neighborhood of Pearson and Livernois. Do we think that these people are, are, are the same folks? We're, we're we... not sure, but there's a high probability that they are. It's the same neighborhood. Uh, yeah. A lot of them are from that area, and we do suspect that this will uh, at least lower the rates that we've been having. But we still ask people to lock their doors and be vigilant and call us if they see anybody suspicious. Thanks. Thanks, Lieutenant. Any questions of the Lieutenant? Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, I think Derek is gone now. No, uh, he's here. Oh, he's hiding back there. Derek, anything else? Uh, I'm sorry, didn't yeah. mean to overlook you. Yes. I guess, uh, ask the permission to demolish the 1857 Camden as part of uh, the consent agenda. I'd just like to point out that we're very grateful to Oakland County for working with us, uh, working with the department on that. They were able to cut through a lot of the red tape that would normally be associated with uh, bidding out a project like that. Uh, made it much smoother for us, and we look forward to working with them in the future, but I thought I'd point that out. So, thank you. I, I actually Thanks, wanted to oh, ask, I actually wanted to ask about that. It, it yeah. seemed from your report, so Oakland County um, handled the bids and had some, some standard numbers already in hand that they use all around the, camp, the county. Oakland County has existing contracts with lots of different yep. professionals, and we reached out and asked them if they'd be willing to work with us. Great. Um, their facilities department and their treasury department uh, responded immediately, sent their people down to do the abatement report, and uh, were over at the facility the other day with us to take a look at it, um, and really made the, the process a lot easier on us as far as going forward. So I thought I'd point that out. That's a great partnership. Great. Yep. Thank you. Byron Fertides, anything from DPW this evening? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. City Clerk. I do have a statement, if you will allow me. Um, the Oakland County Board of Canvassers met today at the Oakland County Executive Building to recount the ballots cast in the May 3, 2011 election. The petition for this recount was filed by Ferndale resident Robert C. Griffs, and in accordance with Section 863 of Michigan Election Law, his petition alleged fraud and or errors committed by precinct election inspectors. Mr. Griggs paid $180 to file the petition. Michigan Election Law Section 869 requires the city to pay the actual and necessary costs of conducting the recount. The estimated cost of today's recount is $2,500. The Board of Canvassers found no fraud, no errors in the processing of voters and ballots. During the recount of the ballots, one ballot was discovered on which the voter had circled the oval next to no rather than filling it in as directed on the ballot. 
Because the voters' intent was clear based on standards adopted by the state of Michigan, that vote was added to the total votes cast against the Headley override. After all ballots were recounted, that one vote was the only difference made to the totals reported on election night. The final canvas of the election, therefore, is 1,848 votes in favor and 1,651 votes against. As I have witnessed at other recounts in other jurisdictions, the observers who gathered in support of the petitioner were heard to comment that they did not realize how many checks and balances were in place to make sure of an accurate vote count. In one instance this morning, an observer pointed to the vote tabulator and asked what it was. This observer also consistently referred to our precincts as districts. It is hard to understand how residents who have little to no knowledge of the voting process can be certain that the process is not being done correctly. Sadly, educating residents at a recount is costly. Residents who wish to understand how Michigan's voting system works are able to do so in a number of ways without additional cost to themselves or to the city. Approximately two weeks before every election, the clerk's office conducts a public accuracy test of the voting tabulators. Notice is posted in the Daily Tribune, and any member of the public is welcome to attend. For this test, a chart of predetermined results is created and ballots are marked accordingly to test every possible valid and invalid voting possibility and to ensure that the tabulator is counting only the valid votes. A copy of Michigan election law and all training materials for the conduct of voting precincts are available on the state's website or through the city clerk's office. The clerk's office also conducts training for election inspectors on several different days at different times within the two weeks prior to an election. I'd be happy to have interested residents attend to learn how the process which guards your democracy in this city works. The city of Ferndale and the staff of the city clerk's office are dedicated to transparency and honesty. Our election inspectors work long hours for very little pay because they are dedicated to the democratic process. I challenge those who doubt the system and the people who work within it to educate themselves. Perhaps then you will come to appreciate the commitment and integrity of your local government. Thank you. Very good. Uh, City Manager, Mr. Wallenweber, anything this evening? Yes, sir. I uh, just wanted, especially with uh, Mayor Lloyd here, that our ongoing study um, we're expecting approval from the Municipal League very shortly on their 50% of our grant to, to, toward the study from ESCI toward a possible consolidation of fire uh, areas, uh, but certainly a, a, an analysis of that, a detailed analysis of that should be beginning hopefully in the next few weeks. Very good. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney Dan Christ. Uh, yes, thank you. One item uh, before council this evening is a proposed settlement agreement with respect to the litigation that council is familiar with uh, involving the development of the property at the corner of Academy and Hilton Road. Uh, the time period for the developer to develop that particular parcel of property has uh, expired. Uh, the proposed settlement agreement is consistent with the direction previously provided by council, uh, and it would be appropriate if. If council wishes to uh, undertake such action this evening to consider a motion to approve the settlement agreement, uh, given that it is consistent with the direction of council, uh, and authorize the mayor to uh, execute the agreement. Would it be appropriate to make that motion at this time, City Clerk? It would. Mm -hmm. I would make that motion. Second. Moved by Baker, supported by Lennon, to accept the settlement agreement. Uh, as, dis as described by the city attorney. Any further questions or comments about this? I and know that, and that's to authorize the manager and to uh, execute that agreement. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments about this? We've, I know we've discussed this at previous meetings, but any further discussion? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Council members Galloway? Yes. Lennon? Yes. Baker? Yes. And Mayor Coulter? Yes, thank you. That uh, item passes. Anything else, Mr. Christ? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Baker, anything this evening? Just a couple of um, quick notes. Uh, a thank you to Derek Delacourt, our new uh, Community and Economic Development Director. He's been very responsive to several citizen concerns um, that have sort of 
I don't, I'm getting them all lately, so they've been kind of channeled through me um, and passed along to Derek, and he not only follows up immediately with the residents, but um, works with his team, with the police department, and with Judge Longo to make sure um, that they are responsive to repeat code violators, um, that people can no longer uh, you know, just, just pay their fine and continue violating. They're really working with the police department and the judge uh, to to stop some of those violations that people are complaining about. So thank you, Derek. It was very appreciative. Um, also, thank you, Sherilyn. <laughs> Our city clerk um, always operates with the utmost integrity. Her staff keeps Ferndale's elections fair. Um, and just thank you so much for all of your efforts. You've made that office so professional and it really shows. And clearly it was demonstrated again today. And then the, the SAFER grant is, is exciting to me for two reasons. One, because we're bringing back four firefighters. But, but bigger than that, being able to bring back those four firefighters says that we as a city and as a council have every confidence, although no one has a crystal ball, but we have every confidence that we will not be making layoffs in the fire department for the next two years. If we make a layoff in the fire department, we have to give up that safer grant. So looking at this in the broader picture, I, it just feels great to me to be able to say that because the millage passed, because we can say with some great assurance that we're not going to have to lay people off, we were able to take the safer grant. So it's just an important statement, I think, to the city of, of Ferndale, to Royal Oak Township and Pleasant Ridge that we serve, um, that we've got a stable future ahead of us for the next couple of years. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Lennon. Yes. Um, earlier today, I think we all received the email very late um, from the head of the FPOA union. Um, I don't know did I received the email. I got a hard copy. Today. Today. Uh, we got it late, though, so you probably haven't got a chance to take a look at it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and it's not something maybe that should go on the city manager's plate at this time, but there is a, and, but I did see you got an email too earlier from uh, Mr. Moore regarding the possible reorganization of the command staff and a cost saving measure when those new 12 hour shifts um, come into effect the first of the year. So this is something I, I, I think that we should at least entertain. It's a good proposal by the union. Um, they're just, you know, uh, want to see us, uh, you know, save some money any way that we possibly can. I'm not going to say we're going to write it as dough, but it's something I'd like to look for in the future. And I'll forward this hard copy I have to you before we leave. And yeah. um, I did receive a copy of it uh, forwarded to the chief. Uh, that will be part of the discussions with respect to the 12 hour shifts, both with the uh, existing. Um, officers unit has and it's been part of our discussion with the command we're still in negotiations okay. with the command people very good that um, also today I want to thank the residents I saw after that torrential downpour we got I saw residents all over out there with their rakes cleaning off the sewer grates because the streets are flooded I want to thank you for that that helps out Byron and the DPW the men and women of the DPW and it also makes the streets a lot safer so thank you to you people. You know who you were. And everybody have a safe and happy Memorial Day, and God bless our veterans. That's all I got. Thank you, sir. Councilman Galloway. Uh, yes, there's been a lot of news recently about uh, Pleasant Ridge perhaps taking the initial steps to uh, break away from our 80-plus year uh, arrangement of providing fire and ambulance services uh, to the residents. Uh, South Oakland Eccentric says uh, Ridge residents wary of Berkeley fire agreement. Uh, perhaps they have reason to be. Uh, Ferndale is seconds away and in Berkeley is, I would say, minutes away at least. Um, we recently had a fire contract committee meeting with the city of Pleasant Ridge and made it extremely clear uh, that we were reaching out to them to provide whatever services they needed or, or wanted from us and were willing to work with them uh, on service delivery and on price. and. Um, it's our hope that uh, they continue this relationship. I think it's been mutually beneficial for both communities, and uh, we're very uh, appreciative of their uh, business, so to speak, and uh, hope that they uh, appreciate the service that we provide. 
Well said. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things for me. Number one, talk about shout outs to the staff. Byron, I want to thank you for, he, he works on a number of items for me lately, then he gets on them quick, in, including the most recent, which was a resident on the east side who had the idea, why don't we have a welcome to Ferndale sign at 8 Mile at West End, which is the entrance to Ferndale on the east side. And Byron uh, very quickly said, why not? It's a great idea. And he's working on that. I want to thank you for getting on that. And every other issue I throw out your way, you do very professionally. Thank you. Uh, and finally, I just want to say have a happy and safe Memorial Day. I hope to see you out at our, our parade, which is, has been mentioned, is the longest continuously running Memorial Day parade uh, in the state. We'll also do a, a ceremony afterwards, as we always do, at, at near Nine Mile in Livernois at the memorial there. Uh, so I hope to see you all out on Memorial Day. Have a ha happy, safe Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, and meeting adjourned. <laughs>